CG100X Airbag Reset Tutorial RH850 R7F701A033 Crash Repair Explained Hey folks, Hussein here welcoming you back to Bob G Motors, the garage where diagnostics meet deep dives and programming turns into pure magic. Before we get rolling, a quick but important heads up, this video is purely for educational and informational purposes. We're here to guide, inform, and share knowledge with technicians, learners, and enthusiasts. All clips, visuals, and references you see are for review and learning under fair use. Trademarks belong to their respective owners, and you should always stick to the manufacturer's instructions and local regulations while working on vehicles. Now let me throw a question at you. If you had the option, would you go for the D1 adapter that requires a resistor weld, or keep things simpler with the D2 adapter where no welding is needed? Drop your choice in the comments. I'm curious to see which team wins. And while you're here, don't just sit back quietly. Help Bob G Motors grow. We're aiming for 10,000 likes and 1,000 comments within the next 24 hours. It sounds big, but together we can do it. Also, don't forget to hype this video using the comment section. It's fun, free, and it gives our content a real boost up the YouTube leaderboard. Plus, subscribing takes only a second, but makes a world of difference for this channel. All right, let's dive into today's topic. The Siege DI CG 100X has recently added support for airbag crash reset functions on Renesis RH850 R7F701A033 processors. To show you how it works, let's walk through a real-world example using a Chang'an module with part number 3658100 M52AA built around the R7F701A033 chip. When you open up the CG100X software, you can search for the part number directly. 3658100 M52AA or simply look it up by processor. R7F701A033. Even if you don't see the exact part number listed, don't worry. The software can still read the processor data and perform the crash reset. Now, here's where it gets interesting. There are actually two different wiring diagrams you can follow for this chip in boot mode. Method 1 makes use of the D2 adapter, and Method 2 relies on the D1 adapter. The main difference? With the D1 adapter, you'll need to solder in a resistor, while the D2 adapter keeps things plug and play with no welding required. Once you've chosen your adapter, connect the CG100X device to the airbag module according to the wiring diagram. Don't forget, you'll need to provide a stable 12-volt power supply to the CG100X unit for the process to work properly. After everything is hooked up, hit the read button. The device will pull the chip ID, then read both the flash and flash data. Make sure to save these files. That's your backup safety net. Once that's done, the software will prompt you to reset the crash data. Just click yes, and remember that the reset requires a live network connection to access the server. Within moments, the operation completes. Now all that's left is to clear any remaining fault codes, and your module is ready to go back into service. And that's it. The CG100X makes what used to be a tricky job surprisingly straightforward, even on encrypted RH850 processors. Thanks a ton for sticking with me until the end of this walkthrough. To circle back to our opening question, if I had to choose, I'd personally go with the D2 adapter. It saves time avoid soldering, and keeps the process cleaner overall. But I want to hear your take. Are you Team D1 or Team D2? Here's a little bonus fact before we wrap up. Did you know that Renesis RH850 processors are widely used not just in airbags, but also in engine control units and power management systems across multiple brands? Their reliability is a big reason why you see them everywhere. So don't forget, help us hit our challenge goal of 10,000 likes and 1,000 comments in 24 hours. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Share this with your fellow technicians. And of course, hype this video in the comments to show YouTube this community is alive and kicking. Until next time, keep exploring, keep fixing, and remember, smart tools make for smarter diagnostics.